Well, hello everybody and welcome to my needle felting fall pins, pumpkins and pies workshop. As you can see from the pictures, um, we're, we're going to be learning how to make one of these and turn them into pins or you could turn them into magnets. Um, and if you're handy at making charms, you could do that as well. Uh, this is a recorded live um, workshop. So um, if you have any questions or anything, I'll have all my information in the description of the video. Okay, so I'm gonna go switch to my hands view. All right, so I'm gonna stay up here in the corner in case I need to show you something. Um, so at any point, just uh, you know, if if I'm if I'm interfering with what you can see, just let me know and I'll turn that off. Um, okay, so you're here because you want to make um, these cute little pie slices and pumpkins. I I added both because the pumpkins are actually a much simpler project over. Oh, see, here we go. Oh, there we go. I'll say technical difficulties already. Um, so the um, the pumpkin pins are actually a much easier uh, project than the pie slices. Not that either is a difficult project, but just um, in terms of difficulty level or something, I find that the um, pumpkins tend to be um, a little bit easier. Now, I had said in the description that I was going to start with the um, start with the uh, pies first and then the pumpkins, but uh, I, I, I believe there's a lot of new felters that are joining this uh, workshop. So I'm thinking that working on the pumpkin pin first would probably help you get a feel for needle felting and using the wool, and then I'll go to the pie slices. So does that work for everybody? All right. I'm going to set all my, all my slices aside. Um, okay, so when it comes to making a pumpkin, so this is what it looks like before I add the pin back on. So here's where I added the pin. Uh, and I actually have fun when making these. So this one's a darker pumpkin. You know, these are a little more of your orangey colors. Um, and I'm just going to change something in my settings. Oop. I feel like my hands are too bright, so I'm just going to see if I tone. Oh, that didn't work. That didn't work either. Sorry, I'm just trying to change my um, sorry, colors. All right, I'll just uh, put it back. This is me just changing things around in here. I'm just trying to give you it. Um, Zoom tends to lighten my uh, screen. Actually, I'm just going to change. There we go. OK. All right, what I did was I, I, I'm trying to make it so it's not so hot, like the high contrast um, so that you could see the colors a little bit better. Okay, so when we're making uh, pumpkin pins, I like to have a certain thickness uh, of the pin. So it's it's about a, a, a fourth, fourth of an inch thick. Um, and why I like to make them that thick is because when you add something like a magnet or a pin, you want to be able to hold on to something, right? Like, like in other words, you're trying to put it on your lapel or on your shirt, right? If you don't have it thick enough, right, it's going to um, be really wobbly and hard to to work um, to get, you know, because you're you're taking the pin out and then you're trying to get it back in there, right? So what I do is this is. This color, I it, 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 I call this like the, to me. This is orange, but it, it, you know, with the with the supplier I buy from, she calls it cantaloupe. Um, but I call it orange. So, if you want to just do something really simple, you could just take one color, and just make that into your um, your pumpkin. I'm 
I like to blend colors together. So I'm just going to show you a quick, we'll be doing this more with the uh, pies, but I'm just going to pull some wool and I'm going to just blend this together a little bit. So this is what in the felting world we call hand carding. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to create a new color or, you know, uh, uh, you know, like, like if I had paints or something, right? So I'm just trying to make some variation of color, right? And I usually do this before I start making the pin itself. Now, if this is, if you don't have a lot of colors to choose from, and this is something that you're not really interested in doing, then what you would do is just take your, just take a color and, and just work with, with that, that color. Okay, I'm just going to leave that there to keep the uh, lighting good. Okay, so now it's like, well, Kathy, how much wool do you actually have there? Um, I've got a pretty good swap of wool. When I make the pies and the pumpkins, I don't actually have a true measurement for it. Um, I know that I want it to. Um, I want it to be a certain thickness. Now, the, the thing with this is that I can create my shape. And if I don't have enough, then I can add more. So I still have some left over. I'm going to set this aside. So I'm going to work with this, uh, this swath. And, and it's probably about, it looks like it's about three fourths of an inch thick. Um, I didn't bring a ruler, sorry. Um, and 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 I would give a guess that that's probably somewhere around three inches wide. Um, again, it doesn't matter. Like my pumpkins tend to be about the same size, but we can work it so that it will get to a certain size. Okay, I, oh, there's my needles. Um, okay, so some of you did buy my supply pack, and in the supply pack, I had provided two needles that look like this. Uh, my needles are fibercraft.ca. I'm, I'm in Canada. So I, I buy from a local supplier who's also my friend uh, and she paints the needles. So if you went to my Google Drive, you'll see a needle guide and that is for Fibercraft. If you have a red needle and it wasn't from Fibercraft, I can't guarantee it's the same type of needle. Okay, so for those of you who joined, I am I did just see a chat. I'm not really checking the chat, so just pop online and ask me the questions if that's okay. Um, hi, Kathy. Hi. Sorry, it's Carol. So my question is approximately, what's the weight of the finished pumpkins without the pins? If if you if you were if you had a handful of um, like, would you say it's like? 12 10 15 grams of wool i would say maybe three. Oh, really okay and not a lot not not i don't use a, a lot yeah like this this amount here is what i'm going to work with i would say this might be two grams right okay yeah and it's batting it, yeah i'm using batting i did bring roving for for those is anyone using this okay so when you're using, I'm using batting. So batting is all crisscrossed, right? It denses up faster and a bit easier than the roving, but you can do this with roving as well. So if I were to be doing this with roving, I would have pulled a swath off and I'd probably work with, I, I just stacked it a little bit. I would work with about this much. And again, it's probably about a quarter of an inch thick. Right, but you can then lay that down and use that. And if you're using, if you're using roving, if you're blending, right? So if you're if you're blending it, the fibers are going to be in one direction, right? If I if I blend this like this, like so, this is when you blend roving, you do it, you do it like this, and you always want to keep the fibers going in the same direction. 
So if you are using roving, because this is a pumpkin and pumpkins tend to be, the lines are all from top to bottom, I would make sure that you leave the fibers going top to bottom. Does that work for those people who have the roving? Right, so you would be working like this um, and, and you'd be folding it up like this. So that's for the roving. So whether you're using roving or using batting, I tend to start by tacking my shape into the wool. So if I'm going for something about that size, I'm just going to stab it. And I'm not worrying about adding the, you know, don't worry about adding these ribs in at first. We will be adding that in um, after we get our shape made, right? So you wanna make sure that you get your shape the way you want it first. And then, and then we worry about adding um, those ribs in. Now, for those who are new to felting, you're probably gonna be like, well, how firm, do I want the wool to be? Um, and we will get to that once I once we create our base shape. So once I stab the shape in, it, it, it it's probably gonna shrink a little bit. So you may wanna go a bit wider than what you are intending for the size. And I recommend that if you decide to make a bunch of these for the season, right, um, that I would, um, you could create yourself a little paper template and just put that in and stab around that once you know what sizes that you want it to be. Um, that, that's, that, that's my tip of the uh, tip number one of the evening. So now I'm going to take, I have my stab around. I'm just going to gently take my needle and I'm going to I'm full, I'm, I'm pulling the loose fibers around where I stab and I'm tacking those in. Oh yeah, so sorry, I got sidetracked. So I'm using a 36 triangle needle. So for those of you who know what needles you have, uh, I'm using a 36 triangle needle. Um, you could use a 36 star as well um, or a 38 star but like that that's what I'm starting with um any any kits I have where I'm working with uh, more of a three-dimensional because even though these are flat it's still more three-dimensional than doing a felt painting on a on a felt sheet I tend to use the 36 triangle to start for those with multi-needle tools I'll get in, I'll let you uh, know how to use that on this type of project in a minute All right, so once I stab around, like I have to pull up, see how it's all sticking into my pad. So you have to pull that up and flip it over and start tacking the other side. Now, right now, mine is pretty, it's pretty loose, right? And I wanna get it, where's my, right? I wanna, I want it to be pretty firm. Like it has a little bit of give, but I wanna, right? This is way too, too loose. So you're gonna just tack it on the other side. And then this is where I start to um, feel my shape and go, wow, this is too loose, but but I want it to be this size, right? So I still have room to squeeze that in a bit, right? To, to push that in. So what I'll do a lot of times is I'll take my finger like this and what I'm doing is I'm pulling, right? So here's the fiber, I'm pulling on the fiber and I'm giving it a tack very gently around my fingers. So I stress this in all my classes, it's not about how fast you work, it's about how accurate you are connecting these fibers together. So again, I will gently pull, like I'm just dragging my hand and pulling onto the wool so I can help keep it rounded or pumpkin shape. I guess it's not really round. It's more of like an oval, flat-ish, oval-ish color um, size. Okay, right. So now I'm, I'm, I'm firming it up. I do use this tool. So this is a 
multi, this is like a five needle punch tool. Um, I know that there are other brands. I like Clover. Clover is definitely a, um, a top quality company. Uh, I've been using the same one for probably eight years, seven years, and um, it still works. Now you may have to replace the needles. Uh, I have broken or bent the needles. Um, you know, you get a little crazy and you start stabbing like this. And then, you know, before you know it, you start wobbling around, you're getting all excited and then it breaks. Okay, it doesn't break that easily, but, um, uh, and just so you know that Clover, when you get the tool, it's a 40 triangle that's in here. And their needles have three notches on each side, whereas uh, my 36 triangle has two notches on each side and there's three sides. Three sides for triangles. Um, if you have this tool, this is the Clover's uh, three needle pen tool. You could use this as well. I tend to take one of the needles out and I'll show you when we do the ribs uh, why I like to use just, just the two, two needles. Uh, but you could use either of these for this project. And what I do is like, I, I'll use this punch tool, then I will come back and I'll tidy up the edges. Now, if you've got it to the size that you want it, oh, I also do this, I'm rubbing it in my hands. And what this does is it will bring a lot of those loose fibers closer to the shape. And then I can stab those and tuck it in a little bit, a little bit better. Um, so that'll help, that'll help it firm up a little bit. So I'm just gonna hold it up. So if you have it to size, and you're like, well, it's still, I still like right now I'm feeling this and it feels very thin here in the center. So I'm just gonna flip this pumpkin over. Can you see the, there is a slight change in, in color from the front. And cause what I did was I just took, because nobody's gonna see the back. So you wanna make sure you pick your front Right, no, nope, you know, because you're gonna have a pin on the back. No one's really gonna see the back. So I'm gonna use this as my back. Usually it's where I see all my seams and things like that. Oh, put this. Yeah. Right, so my front looks nice and clean. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add some wool to fill in that, like it just, it just feels a little bit thin right here in the center. So I'm going to take some wool and I'm just gonna lie it in the back and I'm just gonna start tacking it in. Now I picked my cantaloupe color because that's the primary color in that little blend that I made. So as I'm stabbing this on the back, some of the fibers are gonna come through the front, but it's not going to be that noticeable. If I use something like bright, like this brighter foxy red, um, or I used say white or something, and that comes through, you'll see the color come through. Now, that might be a desired effect that you wanna do on your uh, pin. So it'd be up to you if you want to, um, you know, jazz it up even more. Th does anyone have any questions up to this point? Crystal clear? I'm crystal clear. Yeah. All right. I'm using the brush. Is that fine? The brush? There's a brush. Oh, like a right. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. I actually usually use the brush. This is the brush. She's yes, that's what about. I have. <laughs> this actually works better with pins. I usually use it, use it because you'll you'll destroy your pad faster. Uh your foam will disintegrate faster uh, than if you use the um the pad. And this is a clover pad. So the tools actually go through, like, like it, it goes right into the brush. Can you see my needles going in the brush? So if you have this, this works really well. I've had people, other felters tell me 
that they've used, um, they went to like the dollar store and brought, bought like a bristle, you know, like a cleaning brush or something. I think you want it to have these fine, like the, the finer um, brush. So I would say maybe not like a brush for cleaning the bathroom, but maybe like a shoe shine brush. I think a buffer or something like that. But thank you for bringing that up. I, I I had it sitting over here, and then I got a little excited about making uh making the pins. <laughs> um, okay. So for my tool set, I typically use these needles. Like these are the tools that I use when I make my most of my project. I have other needles. There's probably about 15 to 20 different types of felting needles. And just like paint brushes, right? You might go to a finer brush for one thing. You might go to a, a, a bigger brush for other things. You might use horse hair for one. You might use, you know, or camel camel hair. Oh, but it's been a while since I've painted. Um, and, and, and then using the multi-tools and, and things like that. So in my tool set, I have the 36 triangle, a 38 star and a 38 spiral. Those are the three needles that I go to all the time. So at this point, I probably would set my um, my red tool aside and start using either the 38 star or the spiral. Now, if you're using a spiral, I find that if you're new to felting, um, I use it for finer details. It might it'll bend or break faster because it's a 38 gauge, which is a little bit, it's like one gauge smaller. So the wire's a little smaller at, at the base, um, but because of the spiraling, um, that compromises the needle and makes it weaker. So if you're like stabbing, going to town, you're just like going crazy stabbing and you wo wobble your needles, um, you will most likely bend or break your needle. Um, faster using a finer needle. I can't use any gauge above 41. <laughs> My friend's like, here, here, try, try the 43 triangle. And I bent it in one stab. So I'm, 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 I'm not very good with these super fine needles, but um, I, I will be recording a video about needles. I do have one on Facebook um live like it was a facebook live so under my facebook videos i do have the felting needles but i'm going to re-record it um using my phone which is a much better quality and post it on on youtube um so if you are curious please go to my facebook page and uh, find the videos okay so once you get all right so i'm feeling on the side and I'm feeling it's a little soft on the edge. So I'll take my finer needle and I'll just give it some extra stabs on the edge. Again, if you have this tool, you could flatten that out a bit more. Um, and then a lot of times I will squish it. Like I, what I'm doing here is I'm pressing on it and it's condensing it. just a little bit so that I can get that edge a little bit firmer, a little stronger. Cause you're gonna wear, you're gonna put this on your jacket and you're gonna wear this everywhere, aren't you? Um, okay, so now once you get your pumpkin shape, has everybody got a pumpkin shape at this point? Something, <laughs> okay, something to use, okay. So I'm gonna go back to my um, red needle, my 36 triangle. Now, when I worked on this one, early, I, I actually made this one earlier today. I always like to, before a class, refresh my memory, even though I had made one yesterday. There we go. So, on this one, you can you see how I did use some wool to help me create the groove? 
whereas I didn't on this one. So I can't see this one as well. I can't see my pumpkin ribs as well on this one as I can on this one. So you could do two things. You could just go ahead and you can just start to stab stab the groove into your pumpkin. I only make four, sorry, I only do four lines for five ribs. It's, it's it, it, I don't wanna go crazy and like get, make a hundred of them. I mean, if you want to do that, I commend you, <laughs> but I do not like to add too many. Uh, so I do four lines to make five ribs. So right now I've been, I'm, I just stabbed two in and I'm gonna stab the other two out here on the edge. If you find that it's a little hard for you to, to see that line or to make that line, I'm gonna take some roving and I'm going to pull a very, very thin, well, all right, I, I'm pulling as thin as I can. <laughs> it kind of looks all sloppy and messy, right? And what I'm gonna do is I call this making wool thread. So I'm just going to take it in my hand and I'm going to roll. It in my hand. Right, and I'm creating a line, right? I'm creating what I call the thread. You could use thread. So, so uh, my student and had the yarn. You could you could uh, use up uh, some yarn. I would say that you wouldn't want a thick piece of yarn, but you could use that or embroidery thread if you wanted to sew um, that in. If you have wool, I've seen wool embroidery thread and stuff. It breaks easier, but you could use that as well. So what I've done here is I've created this threading. And now I'm going to lay it onto my pumpkin and see how I have a bit hanging out here. So I'm just gonna tack that in. You could even tack that around the other side like this, like you could just, so it's really securely on there. So I just flipped it over and I just tacked it on the other side. And now I'm going to follow along this line And they have lots left. I'm going to pull that off. I'll show you that in, in a second. But... Can everybody see my hand? Like, do you want me to zoom in a little bit more? No, it's good. Do you, you're, back, you're back muted yeah. again. <laughs> you're all good. Okay. If you're watching this on an iPhone or a Google, I, I can't say how, how large you're seeing it. I'll try to keep my hand more centered though. <laughs> I'll, try to, I'll try to keep it more here in the middle. All right. So what I did was then I just added that line and now you can see that a little bit easier. What I do is I'm finding that with my 36 triangle, I'm having a hard time really getting that in. So I'm using my finer needle. So I'm using a 38 spiral. You could use a 40 triangle, a 41 triangle, a 40 star, right? You don't have to, like, if you know what needles you have already, you don't have to use the exact same one as mine because you'll find your rhythm on your own tools, right? Like um, there's no real right or wrong way if it works, right? If it doesn't work, then there is a wrong way. Okay, so, and again, I'm gonna do that to the other side. And I don't have enough left. I don't think I, I, I mean, I could try to use this. I'm going to pull it off. So when you're pulling it off, I'm secure. I'm going to secure it here onto my pumpkin or my shape. Then I'm really going to pull to get that 
off. Um, I'm using roving and roving, um, you have to really learn how to pull the roving off. Um, it, 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 you know, you'll get it eventually, but sometimes I was I found it a bit difficult at first, how, how to judge how much, how far back to, to pull, right? Because when you pull on it, these fibers are pretty long. So it, it's pretty, pretty tight. You know, you eventually start learning like, okay, like if I want to pull it off, like I, I'm feeling it here. Pulling it back here, I'm feeling it on my on my uh, thumb, right? So you, they're pretty long fibers. We're we're batting; it's all crisscross. So, um, you know, you want to make sure you hold that a lot closer. It's a little easier to pull off. Now mine's a little uneven, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll make up for it over here. No one's going to say anything. They're going to just be so amazed that you made a pumpkin. And they'll be like, you made that out of fluff? Trust me, they all are amazed. <laughs> okay, so does anyone have any questions about this? Is everybody having a great time? Thumbs up if you are. All right. How long would you say it takes to finish one of your pumpkins? The, the pin? Yeah, the whole thing. For, for me? Yeah. Half hour. Okay, so how long would you anticipate us finishing it in? Well, it's 710 and I started at like 640. So it's been about a half hour. Okay. So I was giving, I was giving an hour for each pin. So I'm only going to make one pie filling, but I'm going to talk about the... Like I'm gonna make a, a pumpkin pie uh, filling. I, I call it filling, right? It, it's filling, right? I made the filling, there's no crust on it. <laughs> um, we're gonna create one pie slice, right? So, I mean, you can choose which one you wanna do. Uh, and so I'm gonna show you how to make the slice, how to make the crust, we're gonna put it together. And then if you make an apple pie, they have that crisscross. If you're gonna do pecan, I'll show you how to make the pecans, but I'm not gonna make all three. I'm just going to show you how you can do that because I'm recording this. So you'll be able to go back and, and reference it. Um, I, I say the pie pins take me a bit longer to make. Um, so I think if everybody's going at a, a pace uh, with this, I think that we'll have plenty of time for the pie. How do we get the front of our pin to look smoother? To look what? Smoother. Smooth. So you're going to want to make sure that you take a finer needle and you just really tack it down like this. What I'm doing is I'm randomly going around. You can, you can take your finger like this. Like if it's really fuzzy, you can take your finger like this. And what you're doing is you're holding those fibers. It's like, like when you pet an animal, right? You're always like, oh, pet, pet your animal, right? So what I'm doing is I'm now holding those fibers closer together. So when I stab, it'll get a bit smoother, right? So, and I, you can also stab, see how I'm doing a very gentle side stab? So by doing the gentle side stab, this will also connect your fibers in a bit differently. And you can always take your hand like this. What I'm doing is I'm rubbing on the surface and that's going to mat the wool fibers a bit. And then you can go in, you could tack that down. If you're seeing the hole marks, just take your finger and just give, just, just give a quick gentle rub with your fingernail. And that will. Uh, that that should help um, eliminate some of those stab marks. Now, if it's really, really soft, you're going to see the stab marks. So if you have a really, really soft, is anyone, any hands up if anyone's got a really soft pumpkin pie pin, pumpkin pin, pumpkin pin. Okay. And I say raise your hand. Does everyone know how to use the um, the Zoom reactions? Right, so you could thumbs up. Do you see the thumb in the corner? 
up 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 in the corner here maybe i'll i'll pick something even cuter here's me with sunglasses on you see my little sunglass guy up in the left corner yeah so so I, under you know at the bottom of your zoom screen there's a uh, reactions so for those because there's a lot of you that are don't have your cameras on um so for those of you if if i if if you uh want to participate somewhat you could give me a thumbs up or or a raise hand um as well but okay. shouting out unmuting and shouting out works too <laughs> kathy i have a question about the needles going back to the needles okay um, so you had said that if you bought them from you your friend had painted the tops yeah. But say say you don't have them painted at the top, and you just have a bunch of needles. How do you know which is which? Well, what I would recommend is that you buy a set of needles that you know what they are, and compare it to that. Um, I will. I do talk about that in that Facebook video, and I'm going to re-record and really go into it because guess what? You know, I'm a needle felter, and I. Two people handed me just a box of needles. I have no idea what they are. So I will uh, record myself figuring it out. Um, but but the easiest way to do it is that like, I, I know what these needles are. I know what these three needles are. I have the whole, I actually have the whole set of color needles. So when you get the unknowns, right? I know that these, that this is my coarser needle, this is my medium needle, this is my finer needle. If it falls close to one of these, then I can pinpoint it exactly or, or get a, a basic idea like, okay, so, and then I paint them. Now I have the whole set. So if I have, if I'm stabbing with this and I'm like, hmm, it doesn't quite feel like the 36 triangle, it doesn't feel like a 40 triangle, it's probably a 38, but I have a 38 I can try it with. So I highly recommend investing in getting some needles that you know what they are, even if it's just like a 36 triangle and a 40 triangle, and that'll give you a basic idea. So when you know, so say we're working on this project and you're 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 struggling with like you're stabbing it and your and your needle isn't really going into it anymore, right? Like you're you're working on it and it's like, I, I, wow, I'm like, I feel like, like, is my needle broken? It's really, I, I, it, at first it was really easy to go in and now it's really, really, it, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's, it's not really sculpting the way I wanted to, like I'm stabbing it here, but it's like, I feel like I'm getting pushback. Then, you know, you have to go to a finer needle, right? And so I go to like what I consider my next step up. Does that make sense? It does. It's just, uh, again, I was given a bunch of needles as well. And so um, the person marked them and then I took them out and I'm using them and I didn't put them back. And so I have no idea. And I was trying to figure out, is it the number of little, you know, things on the side? Is it the no. depth or not the depth, the, the diameter? It's, it's all right. So with needles, it's the, so you've got a triangle, which has three sides. You've got a star that has four sides. You've got a spiral that actually spirals when you spin it. The spirals are easy to, to figure out. Can you see in the light? Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So a spiral is easy to detect. Now, I've noticed that if you look at a triangle, it looks like it's more like a sword, that it looks like it's flat. Whereas I noticed that it looks like in the stars, there's a groove on on it okay like it looks like like i like there's like a groove or something so by visual with mo with just my reading glasses um i can tell between those but then there's reverse needles which you could tell because when you when i stab in like when i stab in i'm connecting the fibers when you're doing a reverse needle when you stab in you pull out it's pulling the fibers out gotcha well thank you i mean just even um yeah that helps 
um, again, so it, okay, you were saying, you were just mentioning that you find it, it, like as, as it gets denser, you have to go to a smaller, finer needle. Yes. So are we saying the 38s or the 40s, which are bigger, are going to be like a, a bigger diameter? No, like a big they're smaller. The higher the number, the smaller the wire. It's just like beading wire. So higher number, the smaller? The smaller the actual wire, the smaller the needle. Actual needle, okay. Right, so it, it, it's the gauge of the wire. So floral wire is like usually 14 or, or 16 gauge and it's thick, right? But if you buy, a 24 gauge beading wire, it's it's very um, thin, almost like thread, right? And, and, and the felting wires go similar, like the felting needle are similar in that it's just the higher the number, uh, the smaller the needle and the more delicate it is. So the if you're not, if you're a, a very aggressive felter and you bend and break needles a lot, I would not recommend using, um, a lot of finer needles, um, just because uh, they will break faster. Well, thank you for all that. that oh, you're welcome. Yeah, there will be there will be a video uh, uh, soon. Soon. Yeah. Well, that's more technical. I mean, we're all watching you stab this, and that's great. But I was just more interested about finding out. Okay. Well, thanks. Sorry. Oh, you're welcome. So, if you're working on your pumpkin, and like right now, I'm looking, and my sides look a little bit wider than I want them to. And I'm feeling I still have some softness on this side. So I'm just going to take it. It's firm enough that I can lay it on here and it's not bending. See how it's not bending as much anymore. It's still, still bending, but it's not like if I'm pressing on this, it's going to fall over. So I'm just going to gently stab along the edge and I'm going to shape my pumpkin a little bit more here. I want it, I want it to have more of a round, oops. I want it to have more of like a pumpkin shape rounding around the side. So I'm going to gently tack those edges. I can spend a long time. So someone asked earlier about, uh, you know, how long does it take me to make? Well, it depends on how perfectionist I'm being with it. Uh, right, right now I could say, well, this, this looks good enough, or I could keep fiddling with it. Um, and for the sake of, of workshop time, I'm not going to fiddle too much more with this. And at the very end, I'm going to show you how to glue the pin backs on. Um, I have a finger pad and I found those very helpful. Do you recommend those? A finger pad as in like... I don't, I don't speak myself. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't like using them. I find it restrictive, but I know people who stab themselves a lot find that it works really, really well for them. Is the person who contacted me about buying the glove, are you on? Yes, that's me. I've been speaking all night. Yeah. <laughs> no, I went to the dollar. So everyone, I went to the dollar store and I bought gardening gloves that were suede and I cut off the thumb and I was going to use them as gardening gloves, but then they got dirty and I thought, oh, I'll just go out and get another pair of gardening gloves for for uh, felting because uh, Kathy is really good, but I'm not. And I would stab my I've stabbed my thumb several times and they're sharp, sharp needles and they're painful. So the suede, the thumb was perfect. So yeah, so basically like if you find something that works really well for you, then I highly recommend um, using using it. So if you're finding that they're working, that's great. Like I just found like I don't use gardening gloves. Either. Like I like my hands in the dirt and everything, um, but I have been doing this for, t for eight years. So um, I do stab myself, but for me, that's all part of the process. <laughs> Talk to me in 20 years when I have nothing but scar tissue on my hand. <laughs> so let me see if I recognize any other names. So I got Mona and Judy. Oh, Diane. Hi, Diane. I see. I see Diane Harding. I see the top of your head. <laughs> I can only see the top of your head. 
Hi. <laughs> So any, any, any other questions at this point? So basically, have, has everyone felt like this has been a good start? Like, I feel like that this was a, oh, hi, Anne. Uh, I felt like that this was a good start for um, just to get you used to doing the felting, because next we're going to be working a little more three-dimensional, creating the pie slices. So before we finish the pumpkin, look, and I have some extra wool I could use for something else now. You know, um, I, bought, I bought these uh, supplies years ago and I'm, this is so much fun. I, I never knew how to use them. <laughs> Yay. Well, I'm glad this is helping. <laughs> okay, so now if you look at gourds, I have like a, I have a thousand Gourds. I'm teaching a, a three-dimensional. A couple couple people on on this workshop are in my um, fall gourds class. I'm teaching in person, and uh, I bought three more gourds today. <laughs> I think I have like 20 gourds now to use as reference material. Um, but a lot of times, like when we see pumpkin art, a lot of times the pumpkin stems are green. But a lot of times you'll see they're not green, right? So you can use any color at this point. Like I can use my mustard. I could use a green. I could use a pale green. I could use a brown, um, right? You could use a bright green. So there's no like right or wrong stem color. It's just up to you what you want to use for stem color. Okay, so one thing I didn't tell you needed, you don't need it, but I got a toothpick. <laughs> you could wrap it on your needle as well. Um, for any of you, because you're all loving this, I do have a free uh, pumpkin video on YouTube. Uh, so I highly recommend watching that. And I had forgotten to bring my skewer. So I started using my needle to wrap the stem around. But then the magic skewer fairy found me and gave me a skewer to use. Um, the reason I like to use a skewer is I like to keep things round. Can you see the, that they're round? Um, and because my pumpkin is thick enough, I can have something that's round. Now you don't have to make it round. You could just create a little square and tack that on depending on how thick your pumpkin became. If you're gonna use the, uh, the, the toothpick or a skewer, right? What you can do is you can, all right, I have this, this is probably too much wool, but I'm, if I want it to be a certain size, I can just start wrapping it on to the toothpick. So this is, this is about the size of my finger from the knuckle, not knuckle. Somebody help me here. What's this called? <laughs> Joint. The joint, all right, so from like my, like it's like you count the lines, one, two, are these inches? <laughs> Is it our natural ruler? So that's about the size I'm 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 using and it is probably about a uh, half an inch, half an inch wide. Again, this could just be whatever size you want. So I'm just going to gently wrap it. I'm just gently wrapping it around my, um, toothpick, right? Now, if I felt like there was too much as I'm wrapping it around with wet, whether you're using roving or you're using batting, you could pull some of that off, right? If you think you have too much. And then I just roll it in, in my hand, but I, I didn't have a right tight enough wrap because I was too busy demonstrating. So here, let's see if I can get a tighter wrap. There we go. And now I got a tighter wrap. Okay. So if you wrap it tight enough, I can take my hand and just what I'm doing is I'm I'm just rolling it to get those fibers on a little bit better. Now this might be too long, and of course I left my scissors in the other room. But you, I I don't recommend using scissors if you can avoid it. But you could use scissors on the top. I wouldn't use scissors on the bottom. You do want to have some fluff at the bottom that will attach it to your your piece, right? Let's move these these other pumpkins are getting in the way. Ooh. 
So um, I just gave it a few tacks on the top, very gently. I'm not pushing very deep in there. I will, I will tack my fingers. And you could take it on your pad and you could give it a few stabs on the side. And as I said, you could just take a piece like this and you could just roll it in your hand and just create a stem, what looks like a stem, right? You don't have to do that. I'm just rolling it in my hand and I'm just bending it around and you could give that a few stabs and you could just use, use this. You don't have to get all fancy like I am, right? So you could just create something without using the toothpick. But I like using, I like using the skewers and the toothpicks. It really does help me create these rounder shapes. And I have to, because I wrap very tightly, I do need to use a finer needle. So I am using the gold or the spiral needle. And I'm just giving it, and to keep it round, I am rotating it to keep it round. Um, and now I've got, I'm just going to pull at the bottom here. So I'm just tugging at the bottom. And that's just like, I'm going to remove some of this excess, but that's just helping this to not unravel. So by tugging a bit at the loose fiber end, I'm now creating a, a tighter uh, stem for my, my pumpkin. Um, and then when I, I then, down, do you stab with the needle? I've been sort of tentatively <laughs> sticking it in very probably shallowly because I'm scared of stabbing myself. Yeah. So if you're finding your stuff's not, not, not the, the getting, you know, getting firmer, um, you're probably not stabbing deep enough. So in this case, when you're working this small, having those leather nibs, on, at least on the fingers you're using to hold it, it you know, that would help you be, have more confidence when you're stabbing see when i stab when i stab sideways like i have to be careful because especially if i'm like like if i'm holding it like this and i'm stabbing down i have to be careful i don't hit my finger when i'm stabbing yeah. down but if i hold my hand far enough away I can push the needle in a bit deeper and then all the notches are going to connect. So if you look at your needle, you'll see that like you've got like my notches start here, which is about a fourth of an inch up. And they go to probably about a half an inch up. So all my notches are in one segment. But if you're just gently, if you're just doing this, it's not connecting anything. You're just touching it, right? So you do you want to make sure. Yeah, deeply. And I was just wondering how far down. Yeah, like when you're working flat, like you don't have to go super deep, right? And you're working three dimensionally. You definitely want to. You want to push. You don't want to push it in too deep because you could break your needle. But you want to get those fibers all connected together, right? It's all about all the loose fibers all intertwining with each other, right? So if you're not pushing the needle in deep enough you're not really connecting the fibers together now when i'm stabbing on the side like this i know some of you have taken my needle felt painting classes um right i call this side stabbing what i'm doing is i'm connecting the fibers side to side right as opposed to deep and down in and that's how i work on getting the ribs like i like you know i can type poke the ribs in, but if I really want to get these ridges, I really have to press in here where the ridges meet together, right? But yeah, you want to make sure you're getting that, that connection in there. Um, so now you've got to pick the top of your pumpkin versus the bottom of your pumpkin. <laughs> and then because I made mine three-dimensional, I will tack mine on right here in the center, right? So on my center rib here, very carefully. Again, if you've got your gloves, put them on. And I'm tacking all the loose fibers. I, 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 you can't see me tacking, can you? I'm tacking all these loose fibers into the top. Now, if you wanted to have some green coming coming down here and here, you could get all fancy that way but I'm really gonna tack it here in the back. 
So I'm stabbing down. You can start with your, your red needle or fine, sorry, your 36 triangle or finer needle to tack that in. And then I'm gonna tack it in the front a little bit here too, right? So I'm going to stab into my orange or whatever color you made your pumpkin. And now I'm tacking it. Oh yeah, I moved on to my finer needle because now I'm tacking it into the center. So see how now I'm stabbing it. Yes, Gail, you can. You, Gail is asking if you can make a little leaf and, and you could. Um, I'm gonna be moving on the pie slices, but you could create a little leaf. Like I could even make this a little leaf. As long as you've got a loose end, right? You could just tack that in and then you can have a little leaf hanging off the side, right? So I just made a little flat piece and you'll just tack those loose fibers in like that. Um, now I'm not really getting into that with this workshop, but if you've got um, sheep locks, like little fine, like maybe border leister locks or something, you could tack those on and have like little spiralies coming off as well. And if you get really excited about making these, you could make a little mouse hanging off of it. Wow, there's so many things you can do. <laughs> All right. So that is the long and short of how to make a pumpkin. Um, and as I said, this is being recorded. So you could watch this over and over again. Uh, one thing I'll show you before we get started on our pot, our pie slices is I can come back to this pumpkin, the one that I said you couldn't really see the ribs, and I can go and I can just add a color in there, right? So what I did was I just made a little thread, even though I tacked it you know, in, before you add, once you add the pin back, you can't do stuff, like you can't really do a lot with your pumpkin, because once... Once you get that in, you could work a bit here, but you can't really, you can't really work on the ribs anymore. It'll, your pin will probably, sorry, your needle will will probably break or will it won't go through that metal, right? Um, but with anything needle felt, you can um, if 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 it's sharp, it'll go through. So if you are an embroiderer, you love to embroider, then I highly recommend giving it a try with your felting. Um, you might enjoy adding little jewels and things like that. If, if like, you know, uh, for Gail asked about the leaf, well, maybe you have a little leaf uh, bead that you wanna use and you could sew that on, right? So um, any questions on this before I move on to our pie slices? This is, you, ha you have, you have me, you have me for the next, next hour so now is the time to ask <laughs> okay i actually made, managed to make something out of the wall because <laughs> oh, i had no material fun there you go I, i've never tried it before i just wanted to play along but it's a little pom-pom <laughs> yeah i can see it you you yeah. that's the way you can make beads right yeah. Oh, oh, fun. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> You're like pulling all your, your yarn, your expensive yarn apart. <laughs> no, it's just all bits and pieces. It's just good to have an alternative to knitting and crocheting. This is fun. Well, Thank I'm you. Glad, I'm glad you're having a good time. I, I love, <laughs> I, this is my, this, I love Christmas, but there's something about fall that holds my heart close. Um, it's something so joyful about pumpkins. I don't know. There's so <laughs> many types. So my original idea was the, the pie slice. Can you tell what kind of pie I like best? <laughs> Pumpkin pie is my favorite pie. Um, then is apple. Oh, actually, no. I love the can pie. I love all three of these pies. I would say it's pumpkin and then pecan. Chocolate pecan, I think might trump pumpkin. Sorry, pecan. Chocolate pecan will trump pumpkin. <laughs> um, okay, so when it comes to making 
the, the pie pins. Um, first, I make the filling, right? So in this case, this is the pop, pop, the pumpkin filling. For the, the can pie, I'm actually just using this caramel color, not to be confused with my sand color. Can you see how like the colors might be different on your mod? Like, like like under my camera than it would have been in the picture. So I do recommend going to my Google Drive link to see the true difference between the two. I know you can see the difference. It's a much greater difference than what you're seeing on my camera. And that's just because I have these blue um, lights that are shining on me. You can probably see my face looks a bit bluish. So it's taking the um, a little bit of the warm color out. Um, but this is definitely a bit darker. You you could use this for pie crust, but I'm using this sand color. Um, you could use like a light tan, a beige would work. Um, and, but the the brand, oh sorry, and all the wool I'm using is is Maori bat, M A O R I. Um, in Canada, I buy it from Fibercraft. Um, and in the U.S., I, I can't remember. I remember Mona. I was telling Mona. I went on Etsy and I found someone in the U.S. that sold it. Now the the company is called DHL. See, I should have looked that up before. Anyway, I'll, I'll I'll email you this info if you're curious. It's a place out of England, and they um and and they sell all the Maori batting, and um they her color names might be a little bit different but it's the same exact exact one um so i use the sand for the crust you could i'm not going to get into it but you could blend some caramel in the sand like if you want like a slightly more darker crust on some parts you get really fancy with these um so i have a little i i made sure i brought it in uh, if you went to my google drive you probably saw that I um, had given you, so because the pecan pie, I just used the straight caramel. I didn't bother putting that on. I found that I could not find a pumpkin pie color that looked like pumpkin pie, right? The orange is too bright. The mustard is too mustard. And this is way too red. And it, this is called, it's called Fox with the brand, but it's, you know, it's just like basically like a darker orangey red color. <laughs> but I use these three blended to create the pumpkin pie filling color. When it comes to the apple pie, did I? Where is it? Okay, so I used I blended sand with the mustard to create this color, right? Now, I mean, you could use just the mustard, but I find that pumpkin gets a little like tanny brown when you cook it. So I thought a nice blend of these two colors worked out well. Okay, so I'm going to show you a little bit about color blending so you can create the proper pie. Now, I keep trying to get my pie slices to be like, so my second one came out that size, but for some reason, my other two pie slices don't want to come out quite as big. I think I may have gotten this one close. Now, this pie slice got pretty small, so, well, that's gone now. It's on the floor. Um, so when you're creating uh your when when you're blending your colors i i always say blend more than you think you need that way it, it you don't worry like having to redo it all over again yeah I, I i can't get to that pie slice anymore it's under my chair um okay so with the pumpkin here, I'll hold, I'll, I'll keep some of the pot pie slices out here so you can see. You probably can see like there's there's varying, like you can see varying colors in there, but I like that. I, I don't mind seeing, um, you know, some of the, the blend of the color, uh, but it's, it's, you know, 
it, it, and it could be like, oh, that part got a little darker in the oven than the other part. And, and it's your choice if you want to add the little dollop on the end. Um, I, I actually don't, I like my pie plain. Yeah. I also like plain donuts too, so. <laughs> so I use more orange, like more of the cantaloupe than any of the other colors. So I pulled off from my batting about this much. And I could add more as I'm, as I'm blending it. Um, so I find that I do. All right. So for those of you who like to measure, like, are you good cooks cooking measuring? I wrote, I did three parts cantaloupe to one part fox. So one part fox would be that to half a mustard, which would be like that. Oops, sorry. Oops, like that. <laughs> Um, it might not be an exact measurement, but it's a place to start. So I'm going to stack these and then I'm going to start doing that hand carding again, like I showed you in, in the beginning. And a lot of times what you can do is pull some and then like I reverse the stack and then I'm going to pull again. Um, now for those who are seasoned felters or have been felting for a while, I'm going to pull out my carters and I'm going to just switch over to my face view for this okay hello <laughs> um so these are called hand carters right and we're, I'm going to do this to blend the colors right uh, a lot of people say they look like cat brushes um I think that the way that they're angled and hooked uh, this is meant more for wool, but you could try a dog or cat brush uh, to do this. Um, so you could you could hand card or you could blend with your carters like this. Okay, there you go. Someone said they used their dog brush to to brush out some wool today. All right, so I'm just brushing it a bit like this, and I have to then take it off. So I'm taking it off and I take it off and I, because it's kind of looking a little matty, um, I just will blend a little bit again and then I can take it back to the carter and then I'm brushing it again. This this will blend it a little bit faster. Okay, so for my roving people, for the roving people, um, I would not recommend using this unless you want to convert your roving into batting because it will, it will, um, it, it, it will, it will lose its stringiness, right? So, um, just so you know, like I, I was attempting that a while ago with, with, um, the, sorry, with the roving and it didn't really work out very well. Make sure you move your wool off of where you lay your carters down. Okay. So now I have this big ball and now this is where I would look. And, and, and if you're finding you've got some real chunky pieces, I'll usually just take those off and lay them aside, right? If you really can see um, that blended or you could hand card, right? Maybe some of you are lucky and you have pumpkin pie color, you somehow, found wool that looked like pumpkin pie. I envy you because I have not found any yet. <laughs> um, okay, so now I've got this kind of pile of wool and I'm gonna use the whole pile uh, uh, to create my pie shape. Now, if you are going to create, well, just, just for sake of time, if you were going to create the pecan pie, Right, I would take maybe a couple pieces of batting, or sorry, pecan pie, or if you have pumpkin pie color already and you don't have to blend it, right? I took, I took a piece like this, and I'm just, I'm just pulling it apart and stacking it a bit, and see, I've got the same, I've got the same about the same amount, right? Um, and and 
then you could go with with that. Okay. So, so I'm a little loosey goosey when it comes to this part. <laughs> how am I going to turn this into a pie slice? Uh, yes, let's let's see how how this works. Um, what I do is I start to I'm using my 36 triangle needle. And I'm going to start stabbing the fibers that I pulled apart. This is going to start to connect them together. I can flip it over and stab the other side. What I'm doing right now is I'm just densing it up a little bit, but you can see it's way bigger right now than what I want it to be, but it's still super soft, right? So I'm going to now tack in, I'm leaving about a quarter inch. You can leave, actually leave a half an inch. I'm just stabbing a triangle shape in here. Um, and I'm just gonna start folding. I'm just starting to create my triangle shape by stabbing. So what we're doing at this point is you have to think of this as you're sculpting wool, like as if you were sculpting clay, right? And I make sure I pick up and flip it over once in a while. You can give it some stabs on the side. What we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna be stabbing this. This might come out a bit large. If you think it's gonna be too big, go ahead and pull some of it off now. Like if you're thinking you have like a whole giant pad full of um, whole giant pad full of of uh, pumpkin pie slice here. Oh, see, all right, I I pulled I pulled all that wool and now it's going up my nose. So, all right, now what I got does not look like a pie slice at all. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to hold it on the side. I'm gonna to start to tack it the one side down into a more triangle shape. So I'm just tacking it down. I'm tacking it here on the top and tacking down the other side. So I'm just stabbing. And now I wanna start creating this shape here on the side. It's still, mine's still super soft. But now I'm stabbing to get the flat side where I'm gonna add the pie crust. See, because it's so soft, I'm gonna really be able to dense, condense this down. This is why I said I have a very hard time getting them to be a larger size. So I wanted to see if by doing this, I can get it to stay a bit larger. So as I'm stabbing, it's starting to condense down. Now, if I kept stabbing and stabbing and stabbing, it's gonna flatten out and it's gonna be a pizza slice, right? But we don't want pizza, we want pie. So now I'm gonna make sure that after stabbing on the top, that's why I keep coming to the side. And now when I can gently squeeze the side, And I'm very gently, again, this is where my uh, students with their little uh, glove bits or gloves, uh, their hands are a little more protected. So I'm trying to think, was it, uh, I'm looking, I'm, well, what, what, one, one of my students here, maybe Sky, uh, there was someone had mentioned, um, oh no, Carol. Um, that you you bought the the glove yeah this is a good spot for if you're worried about stabbing your your fingers okay so this is still fluffy here i can take my finger and gently fold that loose part over and start to tack that on by having something so loose and you're working to condense the size this is where your time will come in right this is where your your time consumption comes in when working on this now for those of you who have the multi needle tool this is where you could gently use this to help condense the fibers down a bit more what i find happens when i do it this way is that it tends to stay soft along the edges so i do have to come in 
and I do need to work the edges to keep them from being too soft, right? Because the idea is we want to create a square, like, right, we want to have some sharp angles in there, except around here, you can leave that a little bit rounded for the pie slice. And it's pie, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But again, you know, if I take this tool, it's going to flatten it too much. So I would not use the punch tool when, if you're working very loosely and right, like it, we're controlling the wool, we're trying to keep it to size. Um, you know, sometimes I wish wool was like clay. <laughs> Now, if you feel like your pie piece is too small, you could um, add more, right? So then you could add more. This is what I had left over from my um, my pumpkin piece that I did. So if it's about the same color, right, I can then take some of that and I could lay that on top or around it. Um, or you could bake some more. You could card a little bit more. So Sky has posted something on the chat, a link. Sky, do you want to tell us what you link it was? Uh, it's just um, on eBay. I just ordered it a few years ago, just little finger cuts because people in my art craft class did needle felting and I wanted to give it a go. So just, just cheap tools, but it, it's kept my fingers safe today. <laughs> But it's it's like you say, it is nice to get your hands into the dirt in the garden. And and with this, it's I've got little fingers. And so these are quite big to like if if you're if you're working with a larger piece, they'd be great. But small pieces, it's probably easier just to use your fingers, like you say. But I'm just very nervous of stabbing myself because <laughs> I'd heard it right. was really painful. Well, and that's <laughs> where I, I I tell I say all the time, slow and steady is better. Like, like be the turtle, don't be the hare. Right, it's not about how fast you're working; it's about how accurate you're working. So, if you tend to stab yourself a lot, you just need to be more careful where you're holding your wool. So, as I'm working on here, I'm never getting close to my fingers. Right, I'm always working along the side. I'm always moving my hand around as I'm tacking, you know, working with with my piece. Um, and then that's where I might come to. Um, I'm going to use my I'm using my 38 star needle now. I even got like a little needle holder too. It's just a few dollars. I'm in Australia. So um, yeah, different currency, but yeah, it's, it was good for holding. I'm just so petrified of <laughs> stabbing myself. <laughs> so what time, so you're like uh, in, in, in Canada right now, yeah. we are um, on uh, Thursday. Thursday evening. So what time? When? What time is it? Uh, I'm in the future. It's 10 a.m. on Friday here in hey. Australia. You're like, what a great time to do this class. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Because all the evening classes, well, most of the classes I do online are, and the um, I think your the, your evening ones are like my sort of morning, daytime right. ones. I'll forget the evening class, although it'd be a nice way to do before you go to bed. I had someone from Scotland was going to join us, but she couldn't. And it was going to be 1130 at night for her because I was like, uh, where, yeah. I where, where do you live? Place. It's going to be 1130. <laughs> well, well, yeah, it's you... usually midnight or whenever. I, there's, there's, I've been online with other people from Scotland um, and they're like, well, you have one here. <laughs> oh, oh, is there one here? Did you yeah, there's it? one here. Guilty as charged. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are you from Fife or somewhere? I'm from Edinburgh. No, I'm, I'm up in the Highlands. <laughs> Oh nice. oh, nice. Yeah, so I'm sat here in my pajamas while you're all going about your day. <laughs> well, I'll be head. I'll be heading to bed uh, when we're done. <laughs> I get up early. <laughs> oh, I miss home. I haven't been back for 15 years. I'm so jealous. I wish I could just like jump through the computer. <laughs> we could all swap. Right? How cool would that well, be? That would be nice. So, Kathy, are you planning on trying to get that to be the same shape? Because you just picked up and compared the two I was I was looking um so but the amount that I use I'm going to have a bigger piece 
which is is actually fine. Um, but I'm I'm feel what right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm feeling it because what I want to see is could I condense it down a bit more um, to do that. I don't think I'll be able to get mine. I mean, I I could probably really work it. But um, if I so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten it a bit more. But in truth, would you want it so small? Because if you're putting a pin on, you don't want the pin to stick out, right? Well, I mean, I, this one is is big enough. That one I dropped under the floor may, might be too small, and this one might be too small. But I can add more to it, right? Before I add the crust, right? I could change the size. Gotcha. Oh, it was nice to have you, Sky. Well, well, don't worry. Thank you. You'll get to watch the rest soon. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> it could be very addictive, and I'll like, probably try I, and get some proper wool pieces. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I, I need to know how to add crust. <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat the chocolate pumpkin pie. I've never even heard of that, but it oh wow. <laughs> I did a thing yesterday in a class and they said they did a bit of trivia or something. And I think there was like something like about over 500 different types of pumpkin. There was some phenomenal number. I only know about 10 or 12 here in Australia that we have. Right. Um, but yeah, chocolate pumpkin, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> I'd probably eat the felt one in anticipation. <laughs> I know I was always joking I'm like mm. <laughs> yeah <laughs> well thanks for joining us yeah thank you bye guys bye will we post up their creations somewhere from today oh uh I I suppose I could set up a Facebook group yeah I'll have to or figure, you got a page I'll have or to something figure somewhere. that yeah. that out <laughs> that would be nice hey see everyone's what everyone's done awesome all right i better go thank right, you bye. bye bye okay so mine is a little bit larger than what i had made earlier but it was a good experiment to try um so let's see what time are we at all right we're at eight o'clock so i'm going to start talking about your crust and so there I have like a, I measured out like what I thought we would use, but honestly, like it depends on how big your pie slice got, right? So what you want to do is, if you can see the side, right? So I do want to have a bit, a little bit of thickness as if it were a pie crust. Not that people are really going to see the side much, but I mean, you know, you are wearing it, right? If you're wearing it, people will see see the sides. And 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 if you're going to maybe make a necklace, you could string it up. Maybe you want a pumpkin pie necklace <laughs> or an apple pie necklace. Um, or earrings. Or, or earrings. Um, just so you know, when I made these, I actually wrapped the wool around the wire. So um, if you're going to hang these, you'll, you'll remember the hook will be, sorry, the hook will be like this. So you may have to add another hook depending on how it'll hang. Wait, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let's make crust. Okay. So when you're making the crust, I'm going to be pulling I just I just pulled a piece of batting off uh, for my roving people. Um, you're just going to have to figure out how to get it thicker. Um, I would say stack it kind of like I was showing you earlier is is right. Like you could probably get a nice thickness if you just kind of fold it in like this. Right. Um, and then it'll give you a bit of thickness if you just fold some of those in or stack them up on each other. So what, what I, what I do when I create the crust, I got to put all the pie slices along the side, right? So you can see all the crusts is I want to make sure when I start that the crust is the same width as my pie slice, right? So if my, pie slice, right? Like, I, I, so I wanted the width of to the edge, right? 
Now, if it's a little bit wider, that's okay because you could always fold that up when you curl it. But when you're adding it on, I like to set the size to be about the same. Where's my piece? So what that means is to get a to get a sturdier edge, I'm just going to fold my side in like that. So if I hold my wedge down, I could even mark. Like I just gave myself a little mark on each side to where I want to fold it. Now you could just fold it over to be about the same. If you're, I by the way, I think I may have too much, but I can always pull off, right? Like I, I don't think I need a piece quite this long, but I just want to make sure that I do have enough to start at the base of my pumpkin slice and enough to go we're going to we're going to roll this back down so i probably don't need this much so just letting you know off the top i don't think i need that much so you could take your needle and fold over your needle and give some stabs right and then you could fold the top down or if you're confident you could just take it and just fold it over with your hand you could do that as well if you have a long skewer you could use a skewer a ruler anything that if you think you need aid in 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 rolling that that edge over but this will give you a sharper edge and then i'm going to go to the where i want the tip i'm going to just fold so i'm going to fold these fibers up well actually what i'm going to do is yeah i'm just going to fold those loose ends up and tack them in and now I'm going to hold my pie. I want to stab my crust along the side of my pie. This way I'll have it the right size. And can you see my stab marks? So I've got stab marks here and here. my end is a little rounded so that's why it doesn't go to straight point but this is going to build up so again you could take your needle and fold over and tack that in and again the other side right you just want to fold it over and tack that in now what that's done is it's given you a much stronger side and that when i pick this up you'll see that i'll have a nice piece of crust underneath. Who's getting hungry? <laughs> Mona, is it dinner time yet? Yeah. <laughs> Mona's in Colorado right now. So you're you're at five o'clock or six o'clock? Six? Okay, she's at six o'clock. So she's right at dinner. So she's gonna eat pie for dinner. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm just going to make sure like if my I'm just going to point make this a little bit more pointy here. Well, you know what? I'm going to tack that on and see I'm just going to leave this part out. Again, I don't think I need this much, but for now I just want to start tacking this on to my Sorry, I want to start tacking it on to the end of my pie slice and make sure that uh, as I'm tacking it in, and I'll just give some tacks in the center. And what it's gonna happen is as I'm adding it on, I'm going to be folding it in. If you think that this is too thick, start over again, right? Like in other words, if you think you won't be able to work with this, if this, this I'm starting to look at this, this might be a little too, um, too thick, for mine, I'm I'm gonna not tack it on, but I'm gonna pull some off. And I'm going to work on getting that to be a point. Like I'm just as as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking it may that end may have been a little too thick, but I think I'm good now. So I just have to re tack that on. Okay, so now you're going to pick your top it doesn't matter the bottom doesn't matter nobody's going to see the bottom so 
Um, I'm pay, I'm I I like this part part better than this one. This one's got some divots and stuff, so I'm going to tack my bottom on like the pie crust to where I'm calling it the bottom. So I'm just tacking it on underneath right now. And then I'm making sure that the, the tip of my crust does meet the tip of my pie slice. Does that make sense to everybody? Like we're okay. And so I'm gonna make sure that I really tack it along the bottom. If you're seeing your needle marks, like I would say start with your coarser needle. If you're really seeing the needle marks or it's 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 pushing stuff in too deeply, um, then move to a finer needle. So this is where I start to even up, like I'm pushing the pie crust, I'm stabbing it a bit sideways, making sure it meets up with my edge and then keep tacking it in. Now, if you find that maybe your pie crust is too thin, like I'm looking one side looks like it's a lot thicker than the other side. And if, if that doesn't flatten down, and I may add a little bit more crust to the other side, um, it might not matter. And, and then I'm fixing the, the edge. Sometimes what happens is I work too much on the pie crust and I start flattening out my, my tip here so i may need to go in there and just give some stabs Oop, i got too many needles floating around give some stabs down to shape that right so you should have something that looks like this right now and as i said i know i have too much there but i'll show you in a minute what we're gonna do is everybody good okay. I see pie crust, nice, okay. So now I'm going to make sure that this has a firmer edge, right? So before I fold it up, I'm just gonna make sure that my edge here isn't super fluffy. I just wanna make sure that when I fold it up, that it's not like really loose and like like this, I would call this loose and fly away. So I just wanna make sure that everything's even. And I'm now going to fold it up and I'm gonna tack on, on my back, right? So I'm gonna tack the back, the side, the side? I guess it's the side of the crust, right? <laughs> so I'm tacking it onto the side, right? So I'm tacking, sorry, if you were to bake this in a pan, that would be the side, right? I, I don't know, like I'm, I'm, I'm simultaneously using the, the, edge. the edge. The edge, there you go, thank you. I really feel for the people who are 11 o'clock at night because uh, like I'm tired and it's only eight here, so. Yeah, the late, the later the night, the more stabbing of the fingers. Yes. All right. All right. So we all have something like this now. <laughs> okay. So the idea is that to get the crust to stand up and be enough where we can add, like I did add in the pumpkin and the apple, I did add the ridges did not add the ridges in the pecan pie, right? So I didn't add those little like divots in to create that. Someone help me out here. Judy, help me out here. What 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 do they call it? Because you- Crimping. 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 Hey. <laughs> um, I noticed a lot of pecan pies did not do that. Um, but a lot of times, I, you know, I see pumpkin and apple do have that. Um, so if you think you're going to have too much, you could pull it off at this point. So I'm just pulling off a little bit and discarding that. 
And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just on my pad, I'm just going to roll. You see, I'm just rolling my crust and seeing what it looks like. It still looks like it might be a bit too thick. So before I start stabbing and I'm going to pull a little bit more off. So again, when you're working with batting, I'm holding it very close to where I want to pull it. With the roving, you may have to hold it back a little bit further and, 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 and pull on that, right? Um, so it all depends on how big of a pie slice you created to start with. Hold on one second. Whoop. Sorry, I was checking. My, I have my cell phone here so I know what time it is because I can't see the clock on my cam on my my uh, computer. Okay, so I think this is going to be the right the right size for me, which I would say is about an inch. an inch above um, my pie, my pie filling. Um, and again, if you pulled it and you feel like it, the sides got a little loose, you could just gently tack those in. Okay, so now I'm gonna roll it again and, and see. So if you think it's easier to roll it on something like a toothpick and go ahead and you could put the toothpick in there and you could use that to help you roll it. I'm going to rotate my pad because apparently I chose to use the part that's all divoted in. <laughs> what I mean is that my I overused that part of the pad. So I have a huge divot and I'm finding that my stuff is sinking, sinking in. Okay. So you could use your toothpick and you could roll it on your felting surface to create that round, and then you just slide it out, um, or you could use your hands. So now what I do is I'm gently tacking it just to start getting it on there. And see my ends loosened up, but I can just tack those, I can tack those in. And 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 once once you get that, once we start to establish this crust on the pie, right? Because right now it's still loose, uh, then you can, that's when I start to work the edges on. All right. So I gave it some stabs. It's still really loose, but now I'm going to connect it onto my pie filling. So what I'm doing right now is I'm now establishing it's around. I'm gonna to start to tack the top down. Like, so see, I'm just gent and I'm using my finer needle because I don't wanna push it in. Like I don't wanna squish it in there, but I do wanna to start to connect it on here. And then I'll move back to my coarser needle and just give it some tacks just to make sure it's in there. Um, I'm finding my coarser needles giving me a lot of pushback. So I'm gonna go to my middle needle that I use. So now this is where I go and I start to tidy up the edges here. Like, so I'm, I'm now sharpening up just by going along the end and just tucking in some of those fibers and tacking this on. And then making sure that, just making sure that my crust here, like I don't have the fuzzy end hanging out. And I can stab, like I'm stabbing it down a little bit sideways and that's covering up that hole, uh, right? So I'm just giving, like, I'm just showing you on the side, but what I'm doing is I'm, I'm tacking it down like this and then I'm reshaping the edge and then this is this is all the tidying part like if you have some loose pieces right I start to tack that in and now I'm going to come here and I'm going to just 
start making sure that my pie crust is connected to the slice. So you can see right now I've I've got my I've got my crust on here. I've got the I haven't done any of the shaping on that. Like if you want to add add those ridges there. Judy again, what was it called? Crimping. Crimping. <laughs> I don't bake very much. I buy pre-made pie crust, so it already has the crimping in it. Um, I like to eat pie. <laughs> There's some really good bakeries nearby. Okay, so so now that I have my crust on, as I said, you can keep going and working on it. You could keep working and maybe flatten it out. If you're finding that this side is thicker than this side, you can add, you could go and add a little bit more to that, right? Like you could just roll a little bit of a piece. You could shape, like tack it like that, and then you can add it on, right, to, to thicken that up. If Or maybe the other thing you want to do is you have enough pie color, right? So I'm, I'm pulling some of my pie color off and you could just add that at the bottom. I've done this to some of them, right? And I could say, well, I want, I want a thinner crust. So you could just gently cover over your, your pie crust and, 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 and you could add a little more of your pie coloring on there, right? Depending on what pie you're making, right? So that's, that's another option um, for your, your pie. Okay, so if you wanna do the crimping to your pie crust, I recommend starting with your um, coarser needle and just start, I start tacking about here and see how I'm holding it with my finger because if I start to stab it, it might start pulling off my crust, right? Because it depends on how firm you got it on. So I'm I'm holding the one end. So see, so while I'm doing is I'm just holding it forward, and then I'm stabbing the crimp over here. So my crust is soft enough that I'm able to do this. And again, if you find that after you add them, that maybe this part's a little loose, I would go to a finer needle to to just tidy that up. I wouldn't use a coarse needle. It might push it in too much um, if you want to get that shaping. So I'm going to just go ahead and add those crimp lines in here. And again, you could tack as you're adding it on. So I'm add another one here. Well, it looks like I'm only going to have four on this one. I, I was able to get more on the other ones. Um, so I guess it depends on how fine of a detail you want to do. Um, I could have made it smaller. Uh, right? I could have gone a little bit smaller. You could take a ruler and you could just gently mark it if you want to have um, smaller ones. I could come in here. I guess I could, I could make them smaller, but I'm going to leave it alone for now. So this is where I'm taking my finer needle. And now I'm going to round up these bottoms a little bit. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going along and I'm making sure I'm making it a bit rounder. I can come up here and shape that. And then I can come and shape this end again. You know, I, I flip it around. So I do spend some time working on these, you could take your punch tool needle and you could use this to help flatten it out. I've done this where I take it on the side and 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 help flatten that out. Because at this point, my piece is firming up. So that that punch tool won't over overdo it. So I just keep working on it until I get it to look the way I want. So who here, who here thinks that baking is easier now? <laughs> who, who here has made pumpkin pie? It, it's like, uh -huh. it's so liquidy. 
And it's like, don't overfill it or you have to clean your oven. <laughs> this, this is harder than baking the pumpkin pie. <laughs> well, we're working in miniatures too. You'll have to make some of your little miniature animals, Judy. You have to have yes. little pie slices. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so for time's sake, um, so doing this is, is how you make your pie filling base and the crust. So then you get your fancy, you know, to apple pie. A lot of times apple pie has the crust all over the top, but when you're doing a decoration like this, the crisscross pattern is, makes it like, like they want to see some of that pumpkin in a uh, pumpkin, the apple innards, right? So you want to see like that, that uh, tannish mustard color pumpkin and in innards, <laughs> pumpkin. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, I apologize. Apple innards, apples, we're on apples right now. Forget pumpkins, we're moving them out. No pumpkin. Okay, so and then the pecans. So I promised I was gonna show you how to do the top part. For the dollop on top of the pie, you really just need a little bit of white and you just roll it in your hand <laughs> or your fingers. And that's how I create the dollop. And if you wanna keep um, it a little poofy, you are just going to that you could stab shape it on your pad. You could stab shape it onto your pie piece, right? Like, so I'm just adding a little dollop of white right onto, onto the pie piece. And you could work this more like this one. I, I, I really did work on, on this one to get it to look a little more like the whipped cream, like you've scooped it out and, and plopped it on. Um, but you don't really have to do a lot with that. Um, but if you want to, if if you're worried about your fingers, right? You know, you could just you could just gently just stab it like this on your pad. You could take another needle and you could just you know connect those fibers. But I find just rolling in your hand or something like that will help. Um, but you will want to give it some stabs on your on your on on your felting surface if you want to give it a very uh, firm edge uh, and not be so so fluffy and again I just tack it I just tack it along the edges and I don't really stab in the center I just tack along the edges for that if you're going to be making this a pin for a jacket or something like that then you could take your finer needle and you could stab that into the center uh, and that'll help keep it on stronger, right? You could you could even take your finer needle and stab stab it in the center. So so depending on if you're just going to put it as a magnet on a fridge, you might not need to worry about it being so um, uh, connected to it. But yeah, if you're going to wear it on something, you don't want it to fall off. Or maybe you just like me and don't really put a dollop on. You just like it like this. Okay, so for the pumpkin pie or the apple pie. Look, oh, I happen to have an apple pie made. So what I did to create the apple pie filling is I took basically even amounts of, um, I took some mustard and I took some sand and I just blended those together. And depending on how much apple, like, right, you know, you, you've all seen apple pie. So if you want it to be a little more golden you'll leave more mustard if you want it to be a little more tan you'll you'll put more of the sand color in but because i use sand for the crust um you might want to have more mustard or you could use caramel I, i'm looking here and i used caramel on on this one again you can't really see the difference but um so you could use the darker the slightly darker um color uh, for the crust on your apple pie, right? 
but that I just did the same thing. I just used a combination of mustard and sand to create the, the pie filling for the apple. Okay, so this is this is my challenge. I'm trying to create pieces that look like like this, right? So that I can create that pattern on the pie. I should add, does anyone have any questions about the filling and the crust? I should ask that first. Okay. No. Okay. I got a very firm no and a couple of nods. <laughs> <laughs> um so what i do is i will i i I'll, I'll admit it i had no problem making this one the first time when i was trying to add it to this one last week i was having trouble with it and and i think it was just my brain i was trying to figure how did i how did i get the crisscross where it doesn't look weird <laughs> so I pulled a piece off of my crust color about like this, right? Like, and we can work on it on our pad, but what, what I do first is I roll it in my hand. So I take a strip off and I roll it in my hand. Those of you with roving might find this a little easier. So you, I would just pull like, like a strip of roving and roll it. Like, so if you're using roving, I would do I would do that. That that would probably be easier. All right, so everyone's going to go into their stash and pull out some roving now, right? Um, so first, I roll it in my hand, and then I'll take my needle and I'll give it stabs. Here, I'm oh, sorry. I'll use my red needle. Right. I don't want it to be too thick. So if you think it's going to be too thick, as I'm, I'm, I'm just running my hand over it. I'm just going to pull some of that that off and then roll it in my fingers and give it some stabs. And, and again, rolling it in my hand, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using the pressure of my hand and the oils of my hand to uh, connect. I'm not connecting them in the sense of wet felting, but I'm just getting them to stick, like, like matting them up a bit. And then I can take them on my pad and I can give it some stabs. And again, this is where a tool like this would come in handy. And then you'd have to roll it again. Um, and, and, and then you can switch back and forth with, with needles and stuff. Now this piece got a bit weird. So I'm just gonna pull that off. It got a little flat, right? And then I'm gonna work with pieces like this. Now, if, if you, if you, like I, I'm, I'm working with this right now, right? Um, if you have a longer, piece like say you've got a piece like this of, of batting um you could actually i'm gonna pull that off I, I could like rip down the center and i'd have a longer piece to work with and then i could just pull it apart as i need it right so i could well maybe not let's see this is falling apart on me all right uh, what i was trying to show you was like you, you know if you could if you're able to pull a strip of batting off and it stays long like that you could just create one long piece and pull off what you need instead of recreating all of these. So let's see if I can mimic this one exactly. <laughs> um, okay, so looks like I started with a strip that started here and went down to about just a little below midway. I think the problem is, is that the one piece is a little bit bigger. Um, okay, so I did this. So I'm going to pull that piece. And now I'm going to just start tacking along the edges, right? So what I'm doing is I'm going to flip, I'm right handed. So I always work in my right hand. So I just flipped it around. And I'm using my finer needle. Be, and I'm gently using it because um, this piece is really hard. Um, unlike the piece I worked with earlier, still soft. So I'm going to run along the lines of this piece that I made. And that's going to keep those sharp edges. Now we all know with pie crust, or sorry, with pies, 
it, it you can't just fold this down and tack that in so what i would recommend is if it if you found it got a little thin say over here you could fold that up and tack that on like i just folded it up and tacked it back onto the piece and then it's like i sliced my pie down right so like because you want it to look like you sliced it with a knife so you don't really want you don't really want that crust to fold over see normally if we weren't worrying about pie cut a slice of pie you could just fold it over <laughs> but we can't so if if you have a piece that maybe is too long and you can't pull that off um you could take scissors and cut that but the only reason i don't like using scissors is because it creates a very blunt edge and there's not a lot you could do with it once it's blunt right like you try to tuck it in but it's really all these random squiggly fibers are what um, really help it connect inside. So if you like, I can shred some of this off, right? So I, I but I really held it down and I was just really shredding it like that. Now I can just tack it on the edge and I can just gently fold this up and over and tack it, tack it in. Does that make sense to everybody? Is that okay now this got a little thick uh like a little fatter than i wanted it to be so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go along the edges i'm going to gently push that more into the center of my strip so that i have a smaller strip so that when i go to add the next piece right then I would be doing a similar thing, right? Um, we are at five minutes after 8.30, like it's 8.35. For five minutes, so, so technically class ended, I'm gonna keep going because I wanna show you the pecans, but I'm not gonna go all the way through the pot. Like, does everyone understand, like you're gonna keep making those strips and then you're going to lay it out that it looks that like, like you crisscrossed it. Now, um in the google drive there are pictures of the pie slices so you could mimic what i had done this piece this slice is in there right um, but i do want to show you how to do the pecan pie uh, i don't have a sample of like this is the only one i've made so the pecan pie is the one that's going to take the longest to make because you're going to be making each little the can to add to the top of the pie. <laughs> and then you're adding the little lines. I tried doing it with just the brown and not adding the lines, but it looked like coffee beans <laughs> on, on the pie. So what I do is I have these two colors. This is like, a, it's called um, spice. Um, and, and then I have a brown. Like this is called cocoa. And then this is this is spice. Those are just from the person I buy from. Um, and again, I in the Google Drive, I had put there is a picture of what came in the supply kit, and hopefully you could use that to mimic the colors that I'm showing on the video. Um, so I one of the quite things I had was I think I, I would put a layer of the brown down first, right? A thin layer of this brown or even maybe um, a blend of brown and caramel, which I use the caramel for the filling. Um, and, and that way you have like, because I'm finding it's, they're not standing out as much as I would have liked them to. So I had wished that I had put maybe a darker base um, before I added the pecans on. But I used the spice color to create the pecans. And again, it depends on how big you made your slice, but I'm pulling a piece off like this. Like I, I, I pulled a piece of the batting off. If you have roving, I would finger shred it. You know, like finger shredding. So I, you can get roving to be quite short. So I just keep pulling on it to get those fibers short enough so that you could roll it into a little little ball 
right? Like, so see, I just really shredded it to, to do that. So I'm just using a piece that's about the size of my index finger tip. And I didn't go very thick and I'm just gonna roll it in my hand. I'm rolling it in my fingers first. You could roll it in your hand like this. So what I'm doing is I'm just rolling it and I'm and I'm by doing this, I'm I'm making it a little more rounded, right? So I'm creating this little piece and I'm gonna give it some stabs and and I can fold it, like I can fold it in and under, like you just find your way of creating the the pecan, right? And I'm going to um, I'm gonna use. I'm going to use this little guy as my sample, my one of my pumpkin pie slices, right? And like this is a little bit big for this little slice. So I what I would then do is use less. Like I would just I wouldn't use this. I would just use less next time. I wouldn't use as much wool. And and it's it, you know it's really sometimes unless it's really soft, it's really hard to. Um, I find it really hard to try to condense it down unless it's soft. So it's always easier, especially at this point, to just start over. Um, if you started working on your pecan pie piece and you were feeling like it was too, um, like you did a row, you're like, wow, these are way too big. You could use tweezers to just pull them out. If you really stab them on, uh, you could use a seam ripper to separate that. Same with your crust. If you felt like your crust was like, oh God, it's terrible. Um, you could use a seam ripper to slide in and, and just start to cut those fiber. It'll cut the fibers and you could pull it off and start over again. Um, that's a little tip of the night. So when I'm adding something uh, like, like a pecan, right, what I'm doing is I'm I want to stab it round on here, at least in the shape of a pecan. And I'm just making sure it's on my pie slice. Now, we all know pecans have those little grooves in them. So I gave, or you could use, I, I, I pulled like a thin piece of the brown off. Like I just, just pulled a piece off and I'm going to roll it in my hand. Again, so I'm making that thread again. So again, if you sew, this you can maybe just sew the little lines on there instead of felting them. Um, and, and it got a little bit big, so I'm gonna split that in half. So I'm splitting it in half down the middle because it was just too, too thick and I'll set that aside. You don't really want this to be big. So like, like this amount is probably gonna be enough so let's see what that amount creates. Yeah, so see how I didn't really have a lot and, and I don't really want a big, sorry, I don't really want a big um, piece. So you can lay, you could stab the grooves in first. So they have the three grooves and then you could lay this in or you could just use this to tack it in. And if you've got too much over here, you could just pull that off. And again, see, any time I pull it off, I'm really, I'm really pinching when I pull off. And as you add the one, if you find it's made this one side look a little weird, right? You could just reshape that and then we'll add the other piece in. Um, and and it is just it's it's misshaping it, which means maybe I would have had to stab a little more. Maybe it doesn't matter. People are just going to think it's the most adorable thing that they've ever seen in their life. Trust me on that. <laughs> okay, and then pull that off. And then again, you'll just keep reshape. You know, you could stab and and shape it, and then you would add the next one on right so that's kind of what i did to create the pecans but but again as i said i feel like if you really want the pecans to stand out more i would put a darker color behind them so that they stand out more so that is pretty much the long and short of it does anyone have any questions 
You can unmute now if you want. <laughs> oh, no questions. Thank you. Thanks, Judy. <laughs> I intend to watch the video again because I'm at work and I'm doing five things, but I'm listening to it. So it's good to come back and, and review um, just the little, little details that you put in. And thank you very much. Oh, you're, you're welcome. Um, yeah, um, actually, someone's just said, what about the pin back? Yeah, that's oh, what right. I was just going to ask. Yes, yeah. thank you. See, that's why, that's why it's better for me to do this as a live workshop than recording because I forget things. Okay, so... The pin pin backs. All right, so the same thing. You could use an earth magnet. You can use a magnet. I find the earth magnets will stay on. Um, the earth magnets will stay on a little bit um, stronger than say like those little thin ones that you would cut. Um, so when I add the pins on, um, they're going to be top to bottom, right? Obviously, we can't. Put them side to side with the pumpkins right the pumpkins go side to side towards the top the reason i do it toward the top is if you put it in the middle it'll be top heavy and it'll keep flopping so if you want it to sit like this you want to make sure it's close to the top when it comes to the the pie pins right it has to be like top and top to bottom and so because i'm right-handed i always put my um, the, the turning hinge on the top, right, right by my, 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 my fancy crush, <laughs> my edge. <laughs> this is why I have Judy. <laughs> um, okay. So I use, uh, a super glue gel. Um, this is the same stuff you would use for ceramics. Um, uh, and the reason that it works really well is because the, Super glue will adhere within 30 seconds, but why it works so well, the gel works so well with ceramics and with wool is because it kind of seeps into the pores and then really connects it and binds it. Now, I have had people who accidentally wash their pins and the pin back falls off, but I've actually washed a couple of pins and the pin back has not fallen off. So <laughs> I guess it all depends on how much glue you use. Um, but so LePage is, I know this, this brand is in uh, Canada for sure. Um, I buy it, you can buy it at Michael's, you could buy it like Home Depot. So my guess is that you probably get it in the US as well. Um, but any super glue gel will work really well. Um, but I think this, I think they do sell this in the States as well as Canada. As far as across the globe, I'm not sure. Um, but again, as long as it's the gel. So what I do is, I will doing this live, folks. So uh, <laughs> anything can happen. So I take the top off, and then I you squeeze the sides on this particular brand. I think I'm starting to run low, but so I'm getting it all onto that bar. And before I stick it onto my um, pin, I I. I cap my glue. Now what I do is I take it and I lay it down at first to make sure it's centered, right? And then I'm gonna press it down. So see how I have it centered to the piece and I'm making sure I won't see it. So now I'm holding it down like this and I'm wiggling it a bit back and forth because I wanna make sure, so I gotta look over my camera. Uh, I wanna make sure that uh, it doesn't get wobbly, but I can always add more. Um, a lot of times I'll wait 24 hours uh, that it sets in 24 hours. It sticks in 30 seconds within like 30 minutes. I think you, you could wear it, but it doesn't actually cure or set for 24 hours. Okay, so it's, it's on there now. And then I will hold my finger on it and hope I don't get glued to it. I'll take the top off. And then I will take something and I'll really push on like the inside. Like I, a lot of times I'll take a pencil or something and really just kind of push on. Oh, see, I got some on everything now. Oh, now it's sticking. sticking. Um, I also wanna make sure that my hinges didn't get glued accidentally, right? 
So I'm just making sure that my pins didn't, like my pin back did not get glued accidentally. And then I put it back on and then I just leave this sitting up like this, just, just to make sure it doesn't get glued on there. And, and I'll give it another push and then I just leave it alone. And then I let it, I just put it aside and I let it sit for, like I said, I'll let it sit for 24 hours. If after 24 hours, I, I pick it up, let me just see if any of my, no, like, so sometimes, see, I got really good at this when I first started. What would happen is that I would go to take the pin back off and it would be really wobbly, right? Which meant one side wasn't glued right. So then I, what I'll do is I'll glue that, press it down and let it sit again, right? Um, because if it, if it didn't go on right, it might be a bit wobbly. Now, if you're going to be doing a, um, if you're going to be doing a uh, magnet, you don't have to be like, I still would use, I would still use the same super glue gel, but you don't have to be so concerned about the, um, right, you, I would just hold it down and then just let it go. Like it, it's just with the pin backs. I accidentally did one time glue the, uh, the backing, like the hinges got glued and then it's like, Good luck getting that off the back. But again, you could use a seam ripper and really try to cut through the glue in, in, in the wall. Um, does anyone else have any questions on anything that I did tonight? I have to say good night. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Laura. It was I guess really I'll see you, see you on Tuesday. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm going to go are back you, to. Are you having a workshop on Tuesday? Oh, sorry. I thought you were another Laura. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. Good night. Um, have a good night. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going back to my face. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you everyone for for coming. Um, so this is, a, you know, I, 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 if you have any questions, um, I will be emailing those who are in the workshop. Oh, very nice, Mona. Uh, I'll see. be emailing those who are in the workshop. <laughs> and um, can you see this? <laughs> oh, yeah. Nice. Nice. Very nice. Look at this one. Yay. So I'm sorry. How do you pronounce your name? Mel Melgatina? Can you tell me what that is on there? It, it it's, uh, looks like locks. Process. This is dog's hair. Oh, interesting. I thought I could get it to go through here, but it wouldn't go through. Right. So I drew the picture and I glued it onto it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, uh, animal hair uh, doesn't have the same notches uh, that um, wool has. So wool has all these individual barbs in them. Okay. And animal hair gets matted, but it doesn't connect. Well, yeah, it wouldn't stick. So I'm gonna see if I can find me some supplies and try it again. But this was fun. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah could thank take you very your, much. You could take your dog, like you could take the fur of your animal and blend it with the same color wool, and then it'll connect. And mix it. Mix it. Okay. Yeah. And then All you right. can make make your animal. <laughs> yep. All right. Um, so I'm just going to do the wrap up for the video. And I'm going to then stop recording. But uh, if you have any more questions, um, just hang on. Uh, mm -hmm. so. Thank okay. you. That was really enjoyable. Well, thank you for being here. Um, so for everyone that is in the workshop, you will get an email uh, with the video link. Um, and for those who are watching the video um, and watching it on YouTube, um, you'll see all my uh, contact information in the description and uh, please feel free to reach out and send me photos of your final work. So thank you for joining me. Thanks so much, Kathy. It was fun. <laughs>